how much does the uh, lawyer's uh, service cost? 20 to 30,000 USD. The, UA the UAE is actually um, a, a very interesting destination. If there is any limits in, uh, in, in numbers, who is going to have a, a residentship or citizenship? Dali, I have a few short questions to ask. What's the uh, how, how much? What, what's the uh, what's the um, how much does the uh, lawyer's uh, service cost? Twenty to thirty thousand USD. Uh, we know that uh, lawyers are charging uh, on the hourly basis. Of course, uh, the, the, the more work there is, the more time the um, uh, lawyer will have to spend. And of course, uh, that's uh, the case when you will have to pay more. Um, I'd also In, like, sorry, I'd just also like to make a comment. If you're somebody who has 900,000 to invest in an EB-5 project, you're probably also somebody of significant net worth who should also be retaining and getting pre-immigration tax advice along with the immigration advice. That's absolutely true. Uh, so there are like stages of preparations towards the EB-5 application and uh, the tax consequences, as well as the requirements of the green card that you have to stay in the United States for no less than six months a year. That should be two uh, considerations that uh, is done even before you move forward to doing, to talking to the attorney um, about your source of funds? That's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. David, for switching on. So let me share some more questions. And I have a question about some insights to immigration, uh, re related to immigration to UAE or US. And I would like you, Mr. David, to share, even though I'm from the UAE, but I would like you to share with us more insight that now, because I'm very uh, keen on uh, having an advice from you and your experience is much rich. So could you please give us uh, some insights about immigration to UAE and some things to consider prior to move to UAE or US, let's say. Okay, well, the, oh. UA the UAE is actually um, a, a very interesting destination. Uh, for a number of people. For example, a large number of UK uh, high net worth, ultra high net worth residents, whether they be domiciled or not, are worried and they're looking for a backup plan. And that may be Europe, but it could also be the UAE. So the UAE is, of course, previously the true seal states and very familiar to Brits uh, and to the UK and the, and they've been watching the development I've a, I've only been there since 1990 they've been there of course you know a lot of Brits have been familiar with it uh, since the 70s uh, so very familiar to them schooling uh, great of course flight locations and destinations so for a number of ultra high net worth individuals who if they decide to leave the UK, uh, the UAE would be would be very interesting for them. Um, also, if you're an American who is leaving, an ultra high net worth American who is leaving or considering the option of having the ability to leave um, the U.S. because you're afraid of Senator Warren's ultra millionaire tax and uh, some other uh, tax the rich proposals, the UAE can also be an excellent alternative residence. Uh, you will need to get another citizenship through the criteria that I mentioned, but the UAE is also, you know, uh, it, it's a wonderful place to live, it, hugely developed, it's got all the infrastructure, uh, et cetera, so it's very attractive from that point. Um, inbound to the U.S., let's add on, and if you can think back to my Russian family, for example, if they wanted to if they were focused not on the UK, but on the US, they may want to look at, and particularly the Saudi family, um, where there's a number of, of, of children, we would want to do pre-immigration tax planning. Uh, the EB-5 is a, a 
you were the the end result is resident alien status from which from a tax point of view is you are going to be a US person for tax purposes well if we keep the family wealth outside of the the US through pre-immigration tax planning or only letting for example the children come in uh, in using EB5 as a as kind of a stepping stone uh, it's an excellent way of doing it um, if you've got the the parents, for example, who are staying out and who want to have access to the, the United States for the business or to see their children and grandchildren, they may look, we may do a combination of an EB-5 for those who are on the path to resident alien and maybe citizenship um, in due course and, and want to educate or run the business in the United States. And for those who simply want access, uh, and preferred access simply beyond that of being a B1, B2 visitor, we would look at things like E2s, uh, which are treaty uh, investor visas, or L1s, which are intracorporate transfer, which is reopened uh, now under the, the current Biden administration. And can I ask you a private question, Mr. David? Sure, if you want to ask it in a public forum. <laughs> Yeah, but what was the reason that still you left uh, the UAE? Why did I leave the UAE? Yeah. Family reasons. It's the same reason I'm in Poland. Uh, people ask me why I'm in, currently in Poland, and I have to say, you know, like many things in life, it, it, it surrounded a woman who fell asleep on me on an airplane. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. David. And there is another question related to the UAE again. If there is any limits in uh, in, in numbers and who is going to have a, a residency or citizenship in the UAE, let me take this question, please. So no, there is no any limits. As long as you wish uh, to get this status, you can apply. Uh, the only is your inheritance, I mean, your reputation and your behavior, uh, which is uh, the main factor for immigration to take a decision, either accept or decline your application. And there is uh, some certain conditions like investments in the real assets or in business, which are very simple, as I said today during my presentation. So yeah, that's very simple and there is no uh, limits or quotas for that. Um, Vitaly, есть вопрос для вас. Uh, let me continue in English, please. Uh, if there is any difference in uh, costs for education for residents and non-residents in the U.S. Yes. Yes. If you have a green card and you live in California and um, you go to public school or um, a public college, um, your um, tuition fees would be on the range of like 20 or 30 percent of uh, of the cost that you would have to pay if you are international student, but I'm not talking about the private schools because private schools that's it's not a matter. You remain the same, right, yeah. Mr. David? From your presentation, we realized that not having a backup plan is a disaster. Could you share with us your idea, like what are the main points to consider prior to um, start planning your uh, backup or start planning your future? The main things to consider that I push back on clients because they often haven't thought of this when they first contact me is what are your concerns and what are your goals? What does success look like to you? Once we have that, I tell clients, assume we can deal with any immigration or tax issues, where do you want to be? And not, you may not know for the rest of your life, but for the, maybe the next year, five years, 10 years, because who really can predict what the world's going to be like beyond 10 years. And once they have that, it is also very helpful that they have a, a great understanding of their assets. I'll throw a technical term at you, of their stuff. People have, as we described, businesses, investment portfolios, homes, all kinds of things. And they, and they when they're reaching out to an advisor, it's really understanding what those things are, and also under knowing and understanding your, your family. Um, you know, it's all very nice if you want to move to the United States, but if your teenage daughter will not leave her room 
uh, because she's going to, you know, leave her boyfriend of wherever you're at right now. You've got that's an issue you've got to deal with. And so, as I said, you've got to be able to to know what the the dining room table issues are going to be the soft issues. Thank you so much. It's interesting that it's not about business. It's about lifestyle, right? It's about the unique values that we have in our life, first of all. Well, it, it, it's interesting. I, I Throughout my career, I'll get uh, called by somebody who's been sued or audited, and they'll say, okay, move me to a rock in the middle of the ocean where there's no lawyers and there's no tax system. And I say, not a problem, except pack a gun. And we'll go, why? Well, because within six months, either you're going to want to kill yourself or your family's going to want to kill you. And they go, oh, no, no, no. We want schools. We want this. We want that. And so it's really understanding because the plan has got to be livable and sustainable over a long period of time. And what about uh, tax planning? I mean, what to consider while living one in another country? Let's say if tomorrow someone of us decide to leave the UE or to leave Russia and to move forward to another country, what are the main tax points to consider in order to avoid some unexpected results or unexpected? Sure. So the, there's always two parts of that. The one is jumping out of the pot, which is leaving wherever your current tax home is. The other is not jumping into somebody else's fire. So uh, you need to have both uh, in the team, you need to have domestic tax lawyers who will know, you know how to deal with that stuff that you have in that jurisdiction or subject to that jurisdiction's taxation. And you'll want to make sure when you're looking at what are the, the, the combination of jurisdictions uh, that they have, is there some type of pre-immigration tax planning? In some places there's not, because for example, the UAE doesn't have taxation. You don't have to worry about jumping into a UAE fire but taxes. still, you have to worry about jumping out because while you are living, you have to plan how you will arrive, let's say, in your home country. A a absolutely. So you need to understand both ends of it. And you also need to have flexibility because, and you need to look at, at things. The UAE, for example, or Monaco, those are jurisdictions which are really built on a no tax business model. Uh, places like the United Kingdom, which for a long time with their remittance Dondom system was a, was a tax haven effectively for, for high net worth. Well, David Cameron kind of scored an own goal there and brought in some changes in that. And, you know, we could very well see, I mean, if Labour had been elected in, in the, the last election, they were talking about getting rid of the, the Dondom system before their first budget. Uh, so you have to be aware of, of kind of those changes. Um, and you have to have a plan which is, which is flexible enough and robust enough to deal with, for example, will the ultra millionaires tax come in? Uh, will not the ultra millionaires tax, but an increase in capital gains tax, uh, a state tax. And, and one of the, the, the things that I alluded to um, is, is also understanding the, the family law issues, because everybody focuses on tax and then forgets that statistically half of their children are going to get divorced. And, you know, depending on what jurisdiction that is, and, and prenuptials are a very difficult conversation for young couples to have. Whereas if that divorce ends and the, the, the you know, the, the, the gold digger husband says, well, I want half, you know, the, the, the wife can say, I'd love to give you half, but that, you know, conniving father or, or grandmother of mine set everything up in a trust is not available to you. So that's where planning can overcome potential future uncomfortable conversations. This is extremely complicated field you are dealing with. <laughs> Um, it, it, it keeps my children, it, my six-year-old twins in Hot Wheels and Barbie dolls, so. <laughs> okay, and I have another question related to the UAE. Uh, in which cases the citizenship uh, can be cancelled? Oh, I said that uh, the residency can be cancelled. Well, from my experience, this is the poor behavior. I mean, some 
breakage of law. There's nothing else that uh, can lead to uh, termination of the citizenship or residentship in the UAE. Same as in any other country, I guess. Absolutely. That's something that people need to be conscious of uh, is, you know, countries will withdraw statuses uh, for bad behavior, whether that's criminal or treasonous uh, or bringing Ill, you know, disrepute to, uh, to their new country. Yeah. So I have no any questions for today right now. I was delighted to be your moderator and I hope you liked it. I will be happy to stay in touch with all of you and I would like to thank the organizers who invited us and who gathered us together today to speak about such uh, an interesting things. And to, I love that we had a discussion in such an intelligent manner and we have highlighted that personal um, things, personal, uh, personal nuances, let's say. And it was really precious for myself. I hope the audience was happy, uh, were happy too. And um, uh, let us quit for today and uh, shall be happy to meet all of you guys in next sessions and to have uh, a meeting offline and to have many, uh, maybe to have some projects together because uh, I like when uh, professionals meet professional. This is true joy from our job and from our life as well. So, well, thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Have a great day, Mr. Vitaly. I was happy to see you again. Thank um, you so much. I have to say that I made my vaccination shot yesterday, so I'm getting ready to international travel again. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> so what will be the first country you're going to visit? I think that's Russia. It's obvious. Are you going it's to a big, it's a big market? Meet? It's a big market, yes. And uh, you know, it's so always you're going to attend upcoming event in Moscow and St. Petersburg, right? Um, I'm, we are looking into that. Yes. Hopefully, see you there because I have some small plans to attend them too. Yeah, great. Okay. So thank you so much. If there is something from organizers we need to add, else? No, no, there is no comments from organizers. So, well. Thank you, Olga. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you, Olga. It, thank you're you. a great moderator. Pleasure well, to meet you. Thank you so much. That was my first experience. Hopefully that was not that bad. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I, th I thought you were our experienced. Oh, see? Yeah, <laughs> That's no, no, it was good. Good success. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs>